Hello to all you vacation rental pioneers out there. My name's Matt Landau, and this is Unlocked, the podcast series that introduces you to the world's leading vacation rental innovators by diving deep into one single key, one specific best practice or technique that opened the door and changed the game. Jean-Philippe Remé of To Be Apart in Lyon, France. I think he'd be proud of the way I pronounced his name. And he's something of a vacation rental icon in my eyes. He's one of those entrepreneurs that sort of transcends industry. And his management fleet is about as personality driven as any property management company that I've seen. You should check out their website if you don't believe me. It was in Barcelona, Spain at the Kigo World event that Jean-Philippe was sharing with me his strategy for baking flavor and personality into each of his properties. This tactical strategy has become the big difference between Jean-Philippe's company and all the others in the region. Here's me and Jean-Philippe. My name is Matt Landau. And you are Jean-Philippe. Jean-Philippe Remy. Yeah, so Jean-Philippe Remy. Yeah. You're originally from Lyon. I'm originally, no, I'm living in Lyon. I'm not originally from Lyon, but I'm living in Lyon since eight years. Originally from Paris, if I'm not mistaken. Even not. I mean, so I'm a kind of guy who did travel a lot, okay. as in France, as in the world. I mean, so living abroad. So it's, uh, the, my last location is in Lyon. Okay. What will be next? I don't know. And tell me a little bit about your company in Lyon. It's a pretty special company. It's a pretty special company because uh, it's a uh, company um, which has been reshaped recently uh, from two or three years ago. And uh, we did decide to be very, very focused on place to live. And therefore, all the properties we have now, much fewer than we have had before, but they are really placed highly decorated. And they are, I mean, the aim is place to live. And it's called To Be Apart. And it is called To Be Apart. Earlier, I said to be home, and that's actually a new one that you're starting. It is a new one which we're going to start uh, because it's um, with a different market because it's going to be for mid long term stay, rather, where to be apart is for the short term. So, the to be home will be for people who are staying for two, three, six months a year and more. Wow, okay. And remind me how many properties do you represent? Today, uh, a bit more than 30, 35, actually. Okay. One of the factors of this limited edition theory that we're kind of fleshing out is personality. Indeed. And you have a whole lot of personality. I mean, just looking at you, you are a personality. There's a number of different ways that a vacation rental business can weave personality into the model. One of the ways is sort of telling a little bit about one's previous life, the life that they either left behind or brought with them, which has a way of connecting with prospective guests. People say, oh, wow, he used to be in, what did you say you did before? I said travel, I I lived in Holland, have travel around. Yeah, oh, he used to live in Holland, so did I. It's a way to potentially connect with prospective guests. That's the soft way is looking at it, of looking at it, is that if you're trying to weave in personality and you don't, share some of this information, you miss out on a chance. But the stronger and the more focused limited edition perspective would be you cannot build a sustainable, small vacation rental business without personality in every layer of what you do. And your properties, and specifically one that you introduced me to, is a prototype of that. Blue Dream, tell us first a little bit about Blue Dream real quick so that people have an idea of what the final product looks like. Blue Dream, it's an um, an apartment which is It's not a large apartment, it's a hundred square meter, but it is in a very old Osman kind of building in Lyon. So it's um, it's a high ceiling, uh, 420, with all the wood uh, structure around, so old, uh, the, the original uh, wooden floor, high windows. So when I uh, when I have a, when I bought this apartment actually, and um, this apartment tells you something. I mean, so when I get into an apartment uh, of an owner, and every apartment tells you something. There is an uh, I don't know, vibration somewhere, or something. And um, <laughs> and what uh, did this one tell you? This one was talking about uh, femininity. 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 Wow! Uh, you walked into a, a room you and said, you said this you room. Said, this room tells about uh, yeah, there is something in it. It's not brutal. It's, it's uh, the, the whole what is in is very much uh, around the woman. And have had a dream since long. Do you say that every time? About what? Uh, does every apartment remind you of femininity? No, 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 no. This, this one. is the this, only one this, that ever. You went straight this to femininity. One. I have had, uh, other apartments uh, from. Uh, I have another one which is a curiosity cabinet. 
which so is you just full, get struck with the feeling you get in we say and then you say well this apartment has this one this one this one the last one was uh, on uh, Ponty which is an, uh, a designer and the, the, the last one which is in my portfolio now it's fully blue because the blue of Ponty and so an apartment tells you something you're like that so is the way I look at it actually. you're like the vacation rental whisperer you're speaking to these things I don't know. Yeah, all this speak to me, actually. And Blue Dream? And then I can share that with the guest. And Blue Dream was, I've had also a dream, which was to have a sort of gallery. Okay. A sort of, I mean, it's an apartment which was really dedicated to the arts. And so both with a dream and what the apartment told me. So I did decide with the architect and the decorator, say, well, I want this apartment to be dedicated to women. So everything which is in has this touch. I'd like to take a quick moment to share a little vignette that I keep coming back to. And it's the vacation rental movement like a parade that's coming through town. As independent owners and managers, we can either jump in and join the action, or we can watch it pass by. And as you can hear from this conversation, joining in on the parade means innovating, adopting new technology, and doing things that haven't been done before. This podcast would not be possible without the support of Point Central, a company that epitomizes innovation. Their property automation services like smart locks and smart thermostats allow us to focus on the highest value jobs in the process, delivering a more seamless experience to the people that we work with. Head over to pointcentral.com slash VRMB to learn more. That's pointcentral.com slash VRMB. Thanks to the Point Central team for their leading role in our proud vacation rental parade. Now let's get back to the show. And this sounds like to most people an incredibly unique moment in time in which you walked into an apartment and built something incredible. But you actually have a bit of a process for this for all of your properties. Of course, of course. Of course. How do we do this? So let's just say you're presented with a new piece of a uh, new property. You walk in, you do your whispering, and then what happens next? What happens next is that uh, I bring the architect and the decorator, because um, very often the, the apartment has to be refurbished, renewed, uh, a few things to be moved, the kitchen, the, uh, the bathroom, whatever, means have, things have been uh, to be uh, refreshed or renewed. And I bring the, uh, the architect and the decorator and uh, say, well, I feel that. Do you feel the same? Yes, no. no. And then we uh, discuss this. And then we also discuss and take the opinion of the owner and say, well, this apartment at the end will look like this. We'll have this emotion in it. We'll be decorated in this kind of atmosphere. Do you agree? We also ask the what is owner, that? And what does that look like? A, a simple presentation? It is a, mood, a sort of mood board. So for the first time, for, for the first things first is, of course, the emotion we get. Yes. And then we come back with a mood board. And a mood board, for those who don't know what it is? A mood board is a sort of, um, it's, a, it's a document in which you will have the color, the materials, the tissue, uh, pictures and frames, uh, how it could look like. So you pick up in magazines or internet, whatever, I mean, you pick up IDs. Will it be a vintage apartment or modern apartment? Will it be in velvet? Will it be in blue and red, whatever blue? So we bring all those elements to the- uh, You owner. actually cut out the we photos cut, from indeed, the magazine. Indeed, indeed. Cool. And we present uh, this to the owner and to, to say, well, the apartments tell us this, and is it in, also in line with his test? Okay. Uh, it has to be also in line with him. Okay. Because it's going to be their investment. Because it is their investment and might be one day that they live in. So mm -hmm. it has to be in line. But the thing is that we bring them out of their comfort zone because it's not rather it's not always easy to be a bit radical sure. in terms of design. I mean, I have to think that they would never expect you, someone to be coming it. in with a mood board and like telling about whisperings and they femininity. It. They love it. That's new to them. Yeah, they love it. And you put forth the proposal. You say it's going to cost approximately this then much Then we make uh, quotes and we say, well, how much? A few thousands. And uh, so it, will it be new furnitures, old furnitures? Will it be whatever? And then we quote, we quote them and then it is in the package. And that means the end at the, the renewable, the renew of the apartment, refurbishments, everything, and the decoration and everything in until the little spoon. And this includes, it can include artwork. It always includes artwork, furniture, chairs, lamps, whatever. Everything is in. Everything's everything. in. And they'll say, yes, let's do it, Jean-Philippe. They write the check. Indeed. You go ahead and execute and... 
do you begin hosting immediately? Is it ready to roll? We host immediately as soon as everything is hanged. And then we ask the, uh, the photographer to come, shoot the apartments, and then uh, we, we sell immediately. So it's almost like a, a bit of marketing consulting that you're doing as well, more or less free of charge. They're paying for the basics of the... The upgrades. The idea is for me is uh, to have a property. I invest my time. I invest also my passion. I share my passion for for the design and for the art, because as um, as for the owner, it is um, secure. It's uh, is uh, assets, and it also means it is a sort of service, free service for him uh, to have this apartment. His asset decorated like this. But as also I know the market, I mean, it is very important for the guests to have uh, the answer of what they came and seek for when they come to Lyon in this apartment to spend a week. And how so does this, history. what does this look like on the, on the books side of things? At the end of a year, after you've done your magic with Blue Dream, does this type of process, what are the results? Like, uh, does Blue Dream get more bookings than other properties on the bottom line i mean this blue dream particularly it's a 90 percent uh, occupancy rate and i uh, um, have the most profitable kind of apartments of the whole portfolio actually so in fact the conclusion is higher you go more radical you are of course respecting some some rules but uh, it really that has an impact on the bottom line really and that's sometimes a hard thing for people to gamble on or at least challenge themselves to do but you have now built something of a process i have an historical you have so history to refer to. i have history yeah. on a few apartments where i can really say so okay well for this uh, size this investment this kind of decoration this is the revenue you're going to have every month so i'm going to aim to summarize what you just taught me real quickly please correct me if i'm wrong when you're bringing on a new property you go in there and you feel what it could possibly be and you never replicate the same feeling never never you then sit down with a professional, a designer, an artist, and you ask them if they feel that too. And sometimes they say yes, sometimes they say no, in which case you go back to the drawing board. You then take that agreement uh, proposal along with your mood board to the owner and you put them forth a presentation. They commit to say, yes, let's do this. The apartment goes online and you begin tracking the return on that investment. Mm -hmm. And this is a way that you inject personality into every single property and essentially the, all the inventory that you have. Is that a good summary? Perfectly summarized. Excellent. Perfectly summarized. Well, you are limited edition, my friend. You are a walking limited edition. <laughs> Thank you for sharing all your, your genius with me. You're welcome. Thank you very much. That's the end of this segment. You can go now. <laughs> okay. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> and to close, just a quick reminder of who made this episode possible. It's Point Central, the property automation experts of our industry. Head over to pointcentral.com slash VRMB to learn more. And when you use that page, you'll become eligible for free HVAC analytics, which tells managers when the HVAC starts to misbehave before our guests get upset. This also makes property owners happy by taking care of the problem before it becomes too expensive. And if you're feeling cheerful, please also consider writing us a quick review in your podcast app. We read every single one of them and we pass them along to our esteemed guests. This industry is growing up quickly, my friends. This industry is unlocked. <laughs> <laughs>